All right, guys, next step up, we've been talking, we talked about uh, half reactions on how we take apart a redox reaction, an oxidation reduction reaction. Uh, and we take that apart to look at the inside and look at the flow of electrons from one place to another. But we want to look at why this takes place and can we predict this. So this little short little lesson will be applying some of that to what we talked about when we looked at a single replacement and how one metal can actually, you know, give electrons to another and why this happens and how we can apply that to table J to the activity series. So if you want to predict single replacement redox reactions, we can predict these because usually these single replacement reactions take place when one metal replaces another by trading electrons. So we could give another look to the activity series. And when we talked about that a little while back, uh, we looked at we looked at the fact of uh, we looked at it looked at this in the case of reactivity. So, the activity series again, if we look at it a little bit closer, we'll see that the activity series has these metals at the top, and then we looked at something. We looked at the idea of becoming most reactive. Uh, we talked about the periodic table being the fact that you know elements at the top of this table were more likely to be alkali metals. So you can see the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals typically make up the first maybe third here or 40 percent of them at the top here would typically be your alkaline metals and alkaline earth metals and the reason for that is they're most likely to lose electrons right we talked about metals having uh, a large radius we talked about them having a very low ionization energy low electronegativity so the nature of this these 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 metals is such that they're more likely to lose electrons when we put that into context of a oxidation reduction we know that losing electrons is now oxidation. So elements at the top of this table that are most likely to be most activity or most reactive are most likely to be oxidized. So that's these elements here at the top. Now, as you go down, this ability to be oxidized is less and you're more likely to be less, least likely to be oxidized at the bottom and most likely reduced. So you're more likely to gain electrons as a metal as you go down further when you're in the ionic state. All right, so we want to take a look at this. Now, for nonmetals, it's reversed. So for nonmetals, again, so metals, you're most likely to, to lose electrons. For nonmetals, we're most likely to gain. So if that's the case, we're looking for most likely to be oxidized here, most likely reduced here. Okay? So that's going to become an important part of what we're going to talk about here. So we'll do a few examples of this. So again, so top of the table will most likely be oxidized. At the bottom will most likely to be reduced. Now again, the reduction would have to be the ion of that element. Okay, and we talked about that the zero state must be above the ion. Again, we're going to take a look at this in the middle. So in a minute. So again, so uh, what we're looking at here, again, let's let's take a look at uh, this one here. So let's let's ask a question. Will zinc react spontaneously with uh, hydrogen. Okay, so what we want to do, again, to review our, uh, our idea of um, reactivity, will ZN react with HCl? Now, again, we remembered from a way back that, you know, if you were in the zero state, you, the zero state here has to be above the ion of the thing you're trying to replace. That was the rule that we talked about a, a while ago. So if we take a look at the table here, we see that zinc is here and H plus is here, right? H in the ionic state is here, all right? Now, as long as you are in that configuration, then electrons will flow in that direction. So this is your electron flow. And the electron would flow from the ones more likely to be oxidized to the species that's more likely to be reduced, okay? If that's the case, then this is yes, then this is a spontaneous reaction. So you want the zero state, the metal state, above the ion. Again, zinc would be zinc in the metallic state here. This would be metal, and this would be acid, okay, in the acid state, the plus one. All right, so we can write the reaction as the fact that, yes, this will take place because zinc is more active. Now, what does it mean to be more active? We can put this in the terms of oxidation, okay, that zinc is more likely to be oxidized than H, okay? So then this will take place spontaneously. So again, the spontaneous reaction is more active, more likely to be oxidized. Okay, so then what happens? Zinc becomes two plus, you get the single replacement, you get zinc kicking out the hydrogen or giving electrons to it. Now again, we talked about replacing, but that's really giving electrons to it. This guy becomes oxidized, 
if this guy becomes reduced, electrons always flow from the one that's oxidized to the ones reduced according to the chart. Okay, and then you produce hydrogen with this. Okay, so we can ask also, so again, what's the rule? If you have the zero state above the ion of the thing you're in the reaction, and they're in that configuration, then yes, you get a reaction. The top one is oxidized, the bottom one is reduced. Okay, now will, will gold do this? We'll take a look at gold. If we take a look at gold over here, we'll see that gold um, is in a zero state, right? Okay, and then hydrogen is above it. So in this case, okay, you're not going to get a reaction because this is already reduced, okay? It's already reduced, and this is most likely to be oxidized, which is already oxidized. So you're not going to get any reaction. You can't reduce a zero state anymore if you're a metal. If you did that, you, if you gained electrons in a metal, uh, you would be negative, and, and, and you know, electro, uh, metals don't become negative. So the ion, notice, has to be below the zero state, okay, not above it. Okay, so here's the zero state. The ion cannot be above. It has to be below. Okay, so you get no reaction uh, because why? Because AU is more, more likely to be reduced, and it is already. So you can, you can have to kind of go with that kind of idea uh, when you're looking at this chart. Again, that becomes the rule. All right, so uh, let's look at the nonmetals. Will fluorine uh, replace chlorine? And again, again, we're thinking the, of this, the same idea here. The zero state has to be above the ion. Okay, so we're taking a look at what we're dealing with with the reaction. Will it replace it? So we're looking at the zero state here and ion here. So what in this state, we would expect the top one to be more reduced to gain from electrons from the bottom. So in this case, you get electrons up the chart. Electrons are going to be sucked up the chart in this case. And if that's the case, then the answer is yes. If the most reduced element is above, the zero state's above, that will pull electrons. Okay? So again, oxidation is lose. This would be gain. This would be gain. This would be lose. Okay, so you can only gain electrons from anybody below you in here if you're a non-metal. Okay, so you're most likely reduced, you're most likely to be oxidized for the non-metal. So you see the most likely oxidized reduced, it flips for the non-metals. So that's going to be a yes, okay, because fluorine is more active than uh, active than, than, than anybody below the table, just like the non-metals. Okay, so fluorine, in this case, is going to pull electrons from, the electron flow is going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so for the metals, it was it was losing electrons. For the non-metals, you're going to gain for anybody below you in the table. Okay, and so they're going to switch places. So fluorine becomes positive, negative one for as it takes electrons. And you're going to have chlorine is going to lose the electron, become zero. So again, we have to make sure that we use our Brinkelhoffs. So watch your Brinkelhoffs. They're going to have to be plus, you know, twos here. So you have to do the balancing. Okay, and that's going to have to take place as well. All right, and wh what you can say is fluorine is most likely reduced above than chlorine. Okay, so that's that's it. So what's our summary here? Our summary is is that the rule is an element will only react with with a less active element in below it in the table, a less active ion below it in the table. Okay, otherwise there's no reaction. All right. So to review, the metals. Okay, for metals, you have to be the zero state has to be above the ion. The zero state will lose and become oxidized. The one below will be reduced in gain. Okay, then you can write your half reactions. At least you know what's going on with the oxidation reduction. Okay, uh, for your nonmetals, the top it's the same idea. It's the same for both with the ion. However, the top element has to be a zero state. The bottom one has to be the ion. But now the top one's going to be reduced, and the bottom one's going to be oxidized. So you have to kind of deal with that in each one. So um, that's the chart. Uh, again, you will have the chart with you. Uh, you just have to know how to read it. Uh, you, and you just have to look at what you're doing. A good rule of thumb is looking at the fact that you're looking at your active metals. Your active metals are here. All right. And these active metals we know are most likely to be oxidized to be losing electrons. And those are your, 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 most, your strongest metals. So strong smells are more likely to lose electrons. Okay. And again, fluorine has the highest electronegativity. And you expect that to be the one to gain the most. So again, we kind of already know this. We're just putting it in the frame of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is losing. Reduction is gaining. There must be an oxidation and there must be a reduduction. All right, so I hope this helps. A little short little video here, uh, and we'll see you later.